Welcome back to another episode of Paint Society. In this episode, we're gonna spray with one of the most hated on guns in the industry. And welcome back to Paint Society. My name is Brian, and this is a channel for any skill level, professional, beginner, moderate, to learn some paint work and get started right away. Today, we have this beautiful NX. We're gonna be painting two doors. Let me talk to you first about what the repair is, and then we'll talk about the spray guns we're using. All right, so what we're gonna be doing here is we have some tiny, tiny scratches. We had a tiny scratch here that was prime, and then we had a tiny little scratch here that actually kind of feathered out. Now, this is a black metallic, and some people were like, oh, Brian, you don't really need to blend it, but majority of people were like, you do. Because I already know, I've been here before, I got close, close, close proximity to the next panel, and I don't wanna worry about any metallic not matching the front door. Something like this you could get away with at the edge of a bumper, obviously, if this is a bumper cover, or even a trunk to a quarter panel, it's a small area, but when you're looking at this directly in the sun, you're gonna be able to see the difference, the coarseness possibly of the metallic or a different flop or different shade. Even if it's this minute and you have the eye for it, you'll be able to tell. Regular person probably never, but let's not take that risk. It's one more panel. And beginning early on in the paint industry, I would never do this because I would always be scared of messing up an additional panel, right? Why would I wanna take apart an additional panel? It's perfect, why would I wanna possibly get fish eyes, runs, dirt, any of that. Well, that kind of all goes away once you get a little bit more experience and jobs under your belt, and you realize that this is the proper way to do it to get the best possible finish. But we're gonna be using one of the most hated on spray guns that I've seen in all of the YouTube comments and all of the Facebook comments. You either love it or you hate it, and I'm gonna show you what it is right now. And those guns are the 3M Performance Spray Guns. Now, earlier on in the 3M generation, they had the original AccuSpray, I believe, and those were a complete mess. Now, when these came out, a lot of people were apprehensive, including myself. Including myself, I was a big time hater. And that's something commonly I don't do, but I used the gun one time and I thought it was not good because I just didn't know how to use it. And that's something that I've grown in maturity with this trade is not just taking a one-time experience and pretty much basing it on how I did that time. I might not have known how to use it, and in some earlier videos of mine, I have done that. So I actually got these guns back in my hand. Two of them were a promo from 3M. So I ended up doing some videos on them. I kind of sat around, and then I started to really, really use them. So much so, I ended up buying another one, and then I have one more at home. So I have a total of four just because they're just so easy to use. They might not be the world's best gun, but they're the world's most productive and efficient gun. And I'm gonna show you how we clean them out and how we use them. We have some naked gun cleaner that you guys can go ahead and take a look at. But let's first get into the fluid tip. This is a 1.2 and I'm using a 1.2 on base and clear. Now this is the primer uh, tip. I have a 1.8 in there. That's a little bit big because we we're spraying some surfacer primers. Now the cool thing about these is they disconnect very easily, which I'll show you in a moment. And the tips, they actually last a lot longer than you would think. I thought, oh, I would have to go through these every so often, but I would say I change them give or take after a month or so. And they're a bag of tips and they come through 1.2, I think all the way up to maybe 2.3 you have to correct me on that, but there's a lot of varying different um, fluid tip sizes. And guys, I'm always trying to keep you away from expensive guns because these are a little bit pricey, but they will make you more efficient. I promise you that. So we're gonna go into the spray booth. We're gonna be um, using our base gun first. I'm gonna take this part, I'm gonna show it to you, and I'm gonna tell you what works well with it and what doesn't. So basically what we have for this is it's got this collar here and you just give it like a half turn and then you release, right? And then you have your fluid tip here. See, it's, uh, it's a little bit worn. It's not dirty, but it's worn from going on and off. And basically the fluid tip, it never really comes out. You know, I can undo this, but it's, it's locked in there, okay? So that's one good thing. You never have to pretty much undo this. You can see here that over the years that I've never actually taken it out. That's probably the first time I've ever taken it out. But uh, yeah, that always stays in. So that just makes it 10 times easier. So. We, we, we know that it's at wide open when it's right here, right? It stops moving, all right? And at this point, we can just clean this out. This one's probably got a few uses under its belt. 
And once that's cleaned out and we wipe off the fluid uh, needle, basically we're good to go. And I know you guys hate cleaning guns because I do too. And this just makes it 10 times easier. Now, I label mine base, primer, and um, clear, obviously. You don't have to do that. You could just buy one and do all three. The reason why I do this is because there's been times where I'll just go grab a gun and it, maybe I didn't clean it out 100% perfectly. And um, if I'm going to clear with a base gun, there might be a little bit metallic in it on a, on a straight black uh, paint job. So this just limits that. Um, it takes away that possible issue. This is just always clear. So we don't have to worry about anything being run in, in between it. Now primer, obviously I don't want to use the same primer gun for base and clear, but you guys can just buy one of these because like I said, they, they've gone up in price. Uh, they are a plastic gun, so a lot of people have a have a tough time um, spending a lot of money for a plastic gun, but once you use these in the industry, they're worth it. Now, one thing that might not be obvious, but these actually already are 3M PPS adapters, so they fit right with the PPS system. Um, again, it's a pricey system, but it, it works. So basically, what we're going to be doing here is my first coat, I want to get this all covered, and then I'm going to flick it up a little bit here. I will go ahead and tack her off uh, pretty good. I'm not going to get into the door right now. I don't need to. I just want to get some coverage here, and then we'll go from there. Now, the pressure on this is 20 PSI always. That's what it suggests. That's what I find works the best. All guns will spray a little bit different, but this one is regulated for 20 PSI. Um, at the gauge so it will come with a gauge as well so that's what we're gonna do and uh, let's go ahead and start spraying it on and that's it that's all we're gonna do we're gonna leave it right there for now we're gonna allow this to flash I know all this kind of looks weird because of the sand scratches and everything but if I were to put a, um, a clear base on it all of that would disappear and after a few minutes, this is what it looks like. You can see it's starting to get coverage. Now, here's how I'm going to do this one. And this is a painting tip that I think is important. And I kind of kind of developed this on my own. I'm sure many of you guys do it. It's my own logic is I don't want to have paint right here. They always try to teach you, right, keep it small. But if I'm keeping it small and something's off and I'm looking at this car in the sun, I might be attracted to this area, right? So I'm gonna make this bigger. So once I get coverage here, one more coat, then on my last coat, I'm gonna do my blend through the, both of the doors right in the middle. So now I've taken this color and I've spread it out and I've spread it out. So no longer do I have this area that could possibly be off. And this is most important with, I would say a pearl, white pearl. I wouldn't wanna just do a little white pearl in this area. I would take it here, blend it out, blend it out. Plus there's just a little bit of etching or something here. I don't know, maybe, um, it's hard to tell it's not exactly this but maybe a bird dropping or something of that sort so I'll go ahead and help that out with the customer I'm sure they don't even know but I'll put a little paint over there since it's now smoothed out and then this one's gonna leave better than it came in before the damage so with this gun it actually atomizes really well but something that I've learned it's the paint that you spray the better paint that you spray the more high quality paint that you spray the better the gun can perform with that actual paint. So if you're using a crappy paint out of this gun, it's not gonna help you out. The main reason why you would buy this gun is not because it sprays well, because it's not the most amazing spraying gun in the world, although it does do the job. It's because the ease of use between cleaning and being able to use multiple colors, it really, um, really increases your production time. So we're gonna go ahead head here. I see a little bit of burn through here. So we'll cover this area. We'll bring in a little bit further and we'll stop in and around here. And that's it. Now something, if you've been watching my videos for a long time, you might notice, I never hold the gun like this, like perpendicular really when I'm blending. I'm always cocked at like a 45. It's weird, just the spraying pattern. I just feel like the um, paint lays down smoother when it's coming from the side rather than the aggressiveness of straight up. Now when I'm spraying a panel like this, right, I'm straight up, but if I'm blending something, I'm always at a 45. This is something that helps me and one thing I want to tell you guys, there's no right or wrong way to spray. So if someone's telling you it has to be done this way, there's always different techniques or different patterns or something that you might do that might work better for you. I don't want you to ever think that there's a golden ticket, a golden way to spray. 
because it's what works for you. There's five or six different ways that I can spray and still get the same result. And that's just what we're doing here. So we're gonna allow this to really flash off. I'll check it for coverage. And then if it's covered enough, then we'll do that little blend we talked about. And then it's ready for clear. So we're just about ready for the next coat. Now, one thing that really helps us move faster is 1.2. So 1.2 can be any spray gun, okay? The only thing with this spray gun is it's easier to change to a 1.2 to 1.3 because they come in the little packages, the bags, right? So it might be a little bit more expensive if you're actually buying a fluid tip needle set from a, from a more reputable brand that has a better spray gun, metal spray gun. Um, these with the 1.2, it's gonna put it on quicker. It's not gonna be a heavy material. So it's gonna flash generally quicker. Right here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give myself one more coat, right? And then with that one more coat, I'm gonna go right into the blend after. So I'm gonna go coverage one more time just to make sure we're good. And then I'm gonna do blend, blend, and that's gonna be it. And I'm still around 20 PSI. On the blend, I might back up just a touch, maybe two or three inches, just to kind of fog it on a little bit. All right, I'm gonna start here with my uh, coverage, the last coverage coat. All right, I'm gonna drop my pressure just a couple inches and I'm gonna do this area now. Bring it about five, six, seven, eight inches, maybe a little bit more into that blend, right in front of the door handle. And that's pretty much gonna be it. So I go up. And then I'll bring it back down. And guys, this right now is ready for clear coat. So let this dry and we'll come back and clear it. That's it. We're now ready for clear. Now, this stuff is the stuff you need to get, especially if you're using this gun. It just makes it 10 times easier. Now, this might add up a little bit, it might get a little pricey, but God, it will save you some time. Now, before I clear coat, I always like to spray a little bit through. You never know if you didn't get the gun com completely clean, there might be a little bit dried up clear in there. Um, I'd rather have a little dried up clear come out of my spray gun and onto the surface than another color. That's why I like to keep clear gun clear because you can always buff a little nugget that comes out clear if it was dried up from before. That's happened before, but I really don't want that to happen, so I always go ahead and make sure I take it off and I'll double check it. Just give a little spray, it's good to go. This is only if the gun's been sitting on the uh, shelf for a couple days or so. If you're just using it fresh, it should be clean. So we're using a 1.2 again. I'm a fan of the 1.2. It puts it on nice and smooth, not heavy. You don't have to worry too, worry too much about running it. And uh, we're gonna do uh, panel by panel. That's what I do. Um, I can't spray the whole side. I'm not good at that. This doesn't work for me. So I'll do panel by panel. And we're gonna do 20 PSI again. I'm telling you 20 PSI with this gun is what works the best. So we'll spray it on. We're gonna check it out after the first coat and uh, we'll go from there. We'll get, drop some tips along the way. And we're ready to go. Now you might notice I do wrap my PPS in tape. That is because sometimes, you know, some of the dried up paint can flake off into the paint job and I've had that happen before. So if you make a comment about why I do this, I know for sure you don't watch the whole video and that's gonna be my response when you make that comment because I always get that question and you're gonna miss valuable information if you guys are skipping around in the video because you never know when I'm gonna drop a little bit of information that might only last about 10 or 20 seconds. So watching the whole video, guys, it's for the best of you to make yourself more knowledgeable in this painting world. So it's all shaken up. We're gonna go apply it. I'm gonna to talk to you guys through the respirator while I'm spraying it. Just gonna remind you guys that these paint suits, this is a lab coat. Um, you see me wear the lab coat and the full paint suit. Uh, these are available from Colad. They have our uh, signature on the back with our logo. Uh, Colad, I think, in my opinion, is the lightest weight paint suit they make. It doesn't even feel like you're wearing a paint suit. Um, and it's the most economical. Uh, paint suits are just put in, <laughs> paint suits are just put in a bad situation every day. And, you know, what can happen is they'll get dirt or they'll get um, clear coat on them, you'll end up having to spill and then if you spend a lot of money on a paint suit and it's no longer good, unfortunately, um, your investment is down the drain. So these, you don't have to feel about, bad about if you have to buy another one. Just do a little tack rag here, good to go. A little black, it's not bad. This thing's gonna come out clean, I already know it. 
I spent a lot of time cleaning it before you guys even came in the booth with me. And we got our 1.2 at 20 PSI. Let's go ahead and spray this thing down. So I, already st I always start from the bottom up because I like to see my wet edge. I can't see it if I'm moving from the top down. So you can do it either way. We we've gotten into this debate many times. I don't even get in this debate anymore. This is what works for me and that's it. So <laughs> I'm doing it this way and you can do it however you want but I like to do it from the bottom up because I can see what I'm doing. I'll go about five or six inches past the door gap just to ensure that I don't get a buildup on that door edge. I'm in there around 80, 85% overlap, but I'm also not taking measurements. I won't go too hard on the edge here of the door because I don't want to build up there either. So a lot of guys ask, do you stop the trigger? It's hard to answer that question. I don't even pay attention. The short answer, no. Just keep it going. I might involuntarily let up on the trigger, but for the most part, I'm still triggering. There we go. Nice and clean. One, two, three. 75 to 85 percent overlap. Don't measure it. Just do what works for you, and the job will come out nice and clean. And we have about maybe four or five ounces left. We mixed up originally 13. We might mix up a couple more ounces just to get us to the end of the job. But uh, you can see the savings here. Not perfectly smooth. Okay with it. I don't want the camera to deceive you guys, all right? This is not show off, I can do everything because it's dry-ish around here, okay? That's okay, first coat, I tell you that all the time. Let's not try to show you that everything looks amazing on first coat. It doesn't, and it shouldn't. Now some areas look better than the others, and that's fine. But uh, in this area, it's still a little bit dry. And if you look at it from the bottom and the side, which is I like to do, you can see it's dry, and that's okay. We don't want to get ourselves into a situation where we load the first coat on and then by the time we do the second coat, it's running. You can recover from a run in the second coat, not the first one. So uh, let's let this flash for about 10, 15 minutes and then we can slow it down a little bit and knock it on and it's gonna come out beautiful, I guarantee you. I'm ready for the second coat. I'm gonna scare you guys here because I'm gonna put it on wet and I'm gonna be moving slow and a lot of you are gonna think it's gonna run. <laughs> it's gonna be close. But I need to get it smooth. This is not a Lexus finish right here. This is a uh, this is a do-it-yourself first time spraying finish. All right. So I'm gonna move a little slower, but I can do that because it's tacky now. It's like glue, right? If you touch some some uh, of the tape, it's it's sticky, so it can hold it. Before in the first coat, it would want to just roll right off. So let's get this thing on. It's nice and slicked out. Moving slow, but I'm watching what's happening. Watching these body lines, making sure we have enough coverage. It's nice and wet. We don't want to have to come back and spot some clearing after it's dry. So we're going to try to get it as wet as possible right now. Okay. Now when I'm clearing, I'm not doing that 45 angle crap. I'm doing just straight. Just straight, all right? I just sure all my edges are wet. I'm going all the way to the edge because I need to get that covered. Watch those door handles, it will run. Watch those door handles, it will run. Nice and clean. Keeping it moving. Watching my clear. Periodically stopping. Looking from the bottom up. Seeing how it looks. It's looking good. It still has to flow out a little bit. Moving on to the front. Still have clear left. Make sure you have the bottom of the door. So when the car is on the lift, getting service, it doesn't look all dry at the bottom. <laughs> all right. Nice and clean. Picking up the edge where we left off, right before that uh, door handle. 
using the door handle as a landmark for where to stop my clear coat. Always use landmarks on your panels to help you spray. This way you know where to go. Watch these, these body lines are super sharp. They're asking for a run, but we're not gonna give it to them today. Not today. We're gonna keep it moving. Once it looks good, we're gonna make sure it looks good. Get low and take a look. You're not gonna see any orange peel from up above or dry spots. You're gonna see it from down below. She's looking good. Little dry here, a little dry here. A little spot in. All right. And we could do this right now, and no other time can we do this where it will melt in. It's a little dry here. A little, I don't want to go too much. See, with that 1.2, I'm not too concerned about a run because it's not putting it on too wet. All right, we're gonna leave this and then we'll see what she looks like after bake. All right, so while that's drying, here's where the value is in these spray guns as far as how easy they are to clean. So um, basically all you're gonna have to do is take this off, okay? And then for clear, I don't wipe the inside. We'll just give a little spray. And this reaches deep down inside, so it gets everything clean. You wanna do this right away, uh, because if it's had time to dry, then what happens is you're not gonna be able to clean it like this, you'll have to scrub it. So I'll put a little bit here, and then I'll just wipe the fluid tip. And then, uh, this one's good to go. It's completely clean. Now for the base gun, similar. All we're gonna do is take our rag, and I don't waste material trying to get this clean. I first will wipe it with the rag. These are microfiber tear-offs, so they're really cheap and expensive way and easy and good to have around the shop. So we'll do that. And then we'll give this a wipe. It still has some of that thinner on it. That's clean, that's good to go. And then from here, since we've already wiped out most of the paint, Let's look and see exactly how much material we're using um, to clean out this gun. That's, this is the value in this gun. It might not be the best performing gun as far as clear coat um, is concerned, but the value in it to do different things, okay? All right, that's clean. So essentially we're about under two minutes to clean two guns, and this is the material it took to clean those out. So, this might be a little bit more expensive to you because it's an aerosol, but are you really using that much? So, think about it. We're gonna check this out. It's almost done baking, and then we'll go ahead and uh, see what my final thoughts are on these two spray guns for base and clear. And we got it all unmasked, and this is what she looks like. Before we bring it out, we can see inside the booth, super clean. It looks like it matches pretty well. I always like to give the quarter panel and the fender a buff if I'm doing two doors. So when I go to buff this, I'll just carry it on and I'll carry it on. You wanna have a nice appearance when a customer gets the car back. You wanna make it look like it's all brand new and that's just what we'll do. Let's go check it out. I don't think there's too much sun, but uh, we'll pull her out. And not too much sun out here, but uh, she's looking really good. And just by kind of taking that color and, and utilizing the middle of the uh, two doors here, we've really blended it out. And a black metallic, I know you guys don't want to usually blend it, but just blend it. It's going to be a lot better for you guys. You don't have to worry. Once it goes, it's done. Beautiful reflection here. Beautiful reflection, guys. All right, so let me give you your final thoughts real quick on this 3M most hated performance gun. Let's go back into the mixing room. Have we pulled the NX back into the paint poop, let it dry over the weekend and on Monday I'll finish it up. Now, what do I think about the 3M Performance Gun? Well, like I said, in the beginning of the video, I really hated on it, but guess what? 
I come to actually love it for certain things. And clear coat on two panels is not one of them. Although the video makes it look like it's pretty easy. If I have these two guns in my arsenal and I'm gonna clear, I'm gonna go for a Segola or something like an Iwata or something like a Davila Bis, Sada, something of that nature over this 3M uh, performance gun each and every time I'm gonna choose one of these guns. This is a great gun for your proficiency and your efficiency as far as multiple colors. Let's say you have four bumpers in the booth, they're all different colors. You can take this air um, cap off and just clean it out, put a new one in there or run three or four guns like I do and just keep them moving, keep them moving base. I will use this for clear coat on a bumper, but never again will I ever use it for two panels. Not to say it can't be done, but if you're a do-it-yourselfer or even professional, you're gonna find it just is not as efficient atomizing the clear coat as let's say a Segola or something like that. You won't find me with this type of gun going back and making sure everything's wet. With this, you might find me doing that. But needless to say, it has its place and it's a huge improvement over the last generation. And I will continue to use it each and every day like I do because it's just that easy and it saves a lot on your material as far as cleaning it up. But for clear coat, we'll leave it for the big dogs. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you can learn something. If you enjoy using this gun or you don't like it at all, let me know in the comments. Until then, guys, this is Brian from Paint Society reminding you, don't overthink it. It's just paint. I'll see you guys on the next episode.